brain fog, insomnia, moodiness, achy joints, weight gain. Maybe you're thinking they're all just part of getting older, or that's what your doctor tells you. But Midi Health understands that for women over 40, they can all be connected. Hormonal changes that happen during perimenopause and menopause are at the root of dozens of symptoms women experience, not just hot flashes. Midi specializes in compassionate care for women in menopause. Their solutions are safe, effective, and FDA approved. Plus, they're covered by insurance. A convenient telehealth visit with a MIDI clinician can be your first step to getting personalized care. They'll tailor a treatment plan for your symptoms and health history so you can get back to feeling great. 91% of MIDI patients get relief from symptoms within just two months. When your body changes, your care should too. Book your virtual visit today at joinmidi.com. That's joinmidi.com. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Isn't the universe big enough for both of us? <laughs> what is wrong with you people? We could work together. Why be enemies? Because we're different? Is that why? Think of the things that we could do. Think how strong we would be. Earth and Mars together. There is nothing that we could not accomplish. Think about it. Think. Why destroy when you can create? Welcome to Back to the Frame Rate, part of the Western Media Podcast Network, a weekly podcast discussing movie news, reviews, and recommendations. Our theme this week is alien invasions, and we just heard a scene from Tim Burton's Mars Attacks. Today, we'll be returning to Steven Spielberg for our second film in his retrospective series. And later on in the show, in our Recommendation Self segment, we're focusing on alien invasion films and offering up some recommendations from that genre. I am Nathan Shore, and with me are Ellie Escobar, and returning is <laughs> Sam Cole. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Hey. It's great to be back. It's a pleasure. Hola. I missed Hola. you guys. <laughs> missed you guys. Really good to be here. We missed you so much, Me Sam, too. and... It's yeah, it's great to see you uh, after two weeks where you were literally phoning it in. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's very true. That's like literally true. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually nice to actually hear you and not like that. that I, ah. I, I yeah. loved how I loved my first non sequitur appearance where I forgot to introduce myself and it just cuts to me talking. It's like, hi, I'm a guy. In Indonesia, and stuff is happening. Bye. <laughs> yeah, and I saw the our subscribers just go. <laughs> like, what is this two bit operation? They'll, they'll be back if you if yeah. you build it. They'll come they'll yeah. exactly. Yes. <laughs> well, Sam, I I think just in case this is anybody's first show, and I'm guessing it is because. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, do you want to just tell uh, some of our uh, audience, you know, what you've been doing the last couple of weeks? Sure. Yeah. So I just got back from uh, Bali, Indonesia. I was there the first two weeks of May and I went there um, to shoot episodes for my YouTube travel series, uh, Walks of World, handles Walks of World 1981. And I purposely went there without much of a plan because the way I like to travel is I like showing up somewhere and learning about it and doing 
stuff on the fly and having the freedom to do that. I'm not the kind of guy that has like a tour and like itinerary planned out. Um, I got there, I rented a scooter slash motorbike, learned how to ride and the crazy, insane traffic that is Den Pasar uh, in Bali. And I became very good at it and surprisingly more aggressive than the other drivers, which I don't know says, says good things about me, but mm -hmm. it was a blast. I had a great time. Lots of adventures, summited a, a volcano, lava fields, uh, lots of swimming. It went uh, insanely well, so well that I got suspicious. I was like, okay, I keep having good luck. When is something bad going to happen? That's like my New England like Puritan background of like, well, if something good happens, you have to pay for it. But nothing bad has happened uh, personally yet. Knock on wood. One, two, three. But yeah, it was it was a great experience and it, it it went smoothly. I mean that that's basically the gist of it. That's wonderful. I'm extremely jealous that you had that experience, mm -hmm. but uh, that's wonderful to hear. I look forward to seeing the episodes that you're going to be releasing. Coming yeah, up. me too. Yeah. They'll be good. Them. Lot lots of cool stuff coming up. I had a python wrapped around me and and I touched a lot of snakes oh, wow. and it was scary yeah. and, and fun. It was good, good times. Very Indiana Jones and in the dial I was, of destiny. Yes, I was about to make an Indiana Jones reference. <laughs> yes. But did you bring any snakes in the plane? No, there, there were no snakes on the mother effing plane. <laughs> Love it. Oh man. Oh, but yeah, it's good, good to be back and and kind of exhausted but but doing well the jet lag was like i was like where am i who am i i woke up i didn't know what room i was in i was like oh man i missed the flight no the flight already happened okay i'm good yeah <laughs> i never know what jet lag really feels like because i don't it know it just it just feels it it in a in a brief nutshell for me if if you if you travel east to <clears throat> west and you gain and you go like earlier in the day that does really well for me, I don't have the jet lag. It's west to east, but coming back from Bali, you cross the um, Atlantic. The, the, yeah, the, like you cross the Pacific, like the international date line. So I literally went twelve hours back in time uh -huh. and arrived in LA at nine in the morning. And for me, it was ten o'clock at night the next day. Wow. So I was completely. I was like, I'm going to try to stay awake, try to get through the day. I fell asleep at two o'clock in the afternoon. Woke up at midnight, and I was like, Oh man, I'm screwed now. So were you in the future, <laughs> and then you were in the past, or you were in the past exactly? In the I was in the future, <laughs> and then I went back to the past. I went back to the frame rate to come back here <laughs> to record with you guys. So that's exactly what happened. Look at that. <laughs> but did you meet yourself in the past? Mm. And I I did, um, and I I told him, Don't worry, things will work out. But you got to get rid of that guy man you're carrying too much of a stomach and you got to lose some weight because it was hard going up that mountain because you eat too much junk food and the younger sam said okay i'll listen to you just like that <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> imagine oh my God. imagine though if you could like see yourself on the other side oh my goodness it'd be so freaky oh if i could go back in time and and talk to myself i'd be like create twitter create facebook steal it <laughs> from everyone like <laughs> i wouldn't do that no that's horrible I'd but just maybe, say maybe. invest in google yes yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i knew somebody that invested in google back in i don't know the, the 90s and they oh, retired wow. yep that's amazing. They, oh, retired, man. they retired in their 40s. Oh, gosh. Anyways, so that is uh, wonderful to hear. Um, I don't really have much to report on my past week, except for I've been just working like a dog. But uh, so I'm not really going to share much. Ellie, I don't know about you. Anything you yeah, want to share? No, actually, mm -hmm. it's been a pretty quiet week. Um, yeah. Just taking care of my mom. She's had surgery on her knee. She's doing really well. Oh, that's um, good. Yeah. And, you know, she's. Um, She's going to be 80 in July. My, my dad's going to be 80 in July. Yeah. We're making a big party for her, but don't tell her. Okay. No, I, anyone I'm making a secret that. party for my dad as well. Because if I told him <laughs> about it, he'd be like, I don't want to do that. I'm like, Wait, nope, did, I'm doing it. You can't. You have no say. You're having, a, you're having a gathering. Here. He does not listen to this podcast. <laughs> yes. Not no, he does not. He, doesn't, he wouldn't know. I, with respect to my father, whom I love, he would not know how to find a podcast on the internet. When is your and if he's birthday? listening to this right now, dad, I apologize. You're a great person. Oh. And thank you. Thank you for raising me to be the charming <laughs> person that I turned out to be. Yeah. Hey, Sam, when's your dad's birthday? Thing. July 26th. Shut up. Are you serious? What, is that your, no, is that your my mom's mom, birthday? My mom's birthday is July 25th. 
I knew it was going to be Shut close. I, had, I said the force is with it. Yeah. Oh my mm. goodness. Yeah. My my birthday's July twenty eighth. Really? What That's amazing. The heck? Yeah. And my mom, my dad's birthday is July seventh. Right. What the flabbergaster? <laughs> All these people with birthdays. You got Crazy. It. What the fuck is this? That no, I said focus. I, I I am born in April, which uh, which is an Aries, so I'm like a warmongering, like you know. What day in April? <laughs> April thirteenth. Ah, my sis, my ne- my niece is April second. Oh wow, cool. When's your birthday, Nathan? July twenty eighth. Oh yeah, he just yeah. said. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk about spacey, huh? Yeah. That that that. I, yeah, I can't argue about that. Spacey. I'm a I'm a Leo. My mom. DiCaprio. Yeah. Sorry. I'm a Libra. <laughs> Libra. I'm an Aries, but but uh, I'm sure they say this to everyone. But I went to this like temple in Bali. They're like, "What month were you born in?" I was like, "April." They're like, "Oh, that is the best one. You are the leader of the universe. Now pay for all this stuff." And I was like, "Okay, that's awesome. I like the compliment. I'm buying everything." <laughs> I thought they were gonna say you're the guardian of the galaxy. <laughs> that that would be awesome too. But I don't I don't think I could could be a good guardian. I'd be too scared to fight the bad guys. You know. <laughs> Other than that, I'm thinking of taking martial arts because I've been seeing so many movies about martial arts and fighting that I just want to fight. I really want to do kite surfing, and I've taken lessons. Into gray jelly. I'm always afraid of like the <laughs> if I if I try to learn kite surfing, I had some control over it and I got the basics, but I'm afraid of like a gust of wind like blowing me into the side of a building or something. That's scary. That's scary. Like, yeah, I, I couldn't. Yeah, mm. I'd rather just you know kung fu somebody. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Kung Fu, a serial killer. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that that's pretty, you know, just chilling, you know, going with the flow, Joe. Chilling. Good. Mm-hmm. Good. All right, well, let's share. Uh, move on to our weekly watches and share a little bit about what we've been watching this past <laughs> week. Um, who would like to begin? You guys will find this hilarious because mm-hmm. I've watched one thing this week because I came <laughs> back then I drove up to a wedding in Washington State and I'm on my yeah. way back south. But I did watch, and this is all I've watched this week, so I'm going to report it. Yep. The season seven, epi- the first episode of season seven of Home Improvement with Tim <laughs> Allen and um, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. And it was a very good episode because – it starts in September and they're going up to a lake house um, near one of the great lakes. But Tim is having a midlife crisis and he wants to move the whole family to the lake house and start anew because he feels like his children and his wife are having lives and careers that are going on without him. And she convinces him that it's a terrible idea to move to the lake house, to the lodge, that they have all their family and friends in Detroit. And so it's his midlife crisis episode. And that is all that I watched this week, but it was really, really good. <laughs> Wait a minute, but I did see a man called Otto on the plane. I loved that. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I know uh, Ellie was talking about it uh, the other day. I, thought I, I avoided the movie because of the trailer. I thought it was going to be like kind of sentimental schlock, but it turned out mm-hmm. to be a really good movie with great performances. Um and I knew I was going to like it because this gives nothing away. But the opening scene is like Tom Hanks in a like angry mood, like trying to right? cut a rope at like Home Depot. And he takes his own knife out to cut the rope. <laughs> and he's like, the guy's like, well, sir, normally we provide the knife. We do the cutting for you. He's like, why do you think I'm going to cut myself and then sue you? And I was like, oh, I love this movie. Angry Tom Hanks. <laughs> I'm on board. And he gets like a call from like a. Uh, a bot and he's like robot robot no no robot and he hangs up and so that was really good but uh, i saw it, that oh good man called auto and season uh seven episode one home improvement i um have a confession sam ah. and, and i know how dear um home improvement is to you i have never watched one episode I totally understand that. You know, I never watched one episode in the 90s, mostly because my dad would watch TV at night and I would like be doing homework and stuff. I discovered it later and I surprisingly love it. And it's difficult to explain why, but it reminds me of like growing up in the 90s because I was the same age as like the kids in that show. So it's like watching. They're not my family, but it reminds it's just it's like total comfort food. Yeah, and I but my enjoyment of the show is genuine. Like it's, I wouldn't watch it if I was like, oh, this is okay. Like I've I've ended up watching the whole show, but I totally hear you. I didn't see it in the '90s. Like 
only discovered it at, at like a, on a, in a hotel or something a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I only watched, uh, I, I actually did not watch TV at all in, <laughs> in the nineties at all. I remember I was in college and I was, it was when I discovered movies mostly in the nineties and I was That's like, awesome. ah, bad TV bad. I, I, I wasn't into it at all. Cause TV for the most part, I don't think was fantastic in the nineties. Uh, there was some, there were some good shows, but I caught up on the things I liked later on. But I watched two things in the nineties. One was the X Files. My X Sunday Lord nights, my Sunday nights were occupied by the Simpsons and the X Files. That's all I think I watched. Did you like the X Files movie, the nineteen ninety eight movie? Yes. Did oh my see, god! Did you see I, the second one? Did you see the second X Files movie? Nowhere near as good. Crap. I thought it was terrible. Yeah. Yes, I agree. The the, <laughs> 90, the 98 movie, though, I will say that that like descent into the spaceship in Fight the, the Antarctic, that the whole spaceship scene in the Antarctic right. at the end is like the stuff that dreams are made of. I it is. And it's, re- yeah. and it's really just a, a long episode, too, because yeah. it comes right, I think, between season six and seven, maybe it was. I forget yes. what it was. But, it was the show but was, it was going, yeah. It was a beautiful episode 6.1 or whatever, you know, whatever it was, but it was, uh, yeah. uh, it was at the peak, peak X-Files. I, I loved that, that movie. I loved it too. So, I, I recall yeah. good memories. Yeah. yeah. Seekonk, yeah. uh, I th- saw it, the Seekonk cinema one through 10 in the summer yeah. of 98. Yep. <laughs> that, that building is still there, by the way, they haven't knocked it down. It's I just drive a, right by it practically every day. Yeah. It's just yeah. sitting there. I got to like make a, take a video of it and make an episode before they get rid of it and turn. I want to, I want to go, I want to go back in it. Yeah. I want to go in it. I bet it's so like dark and creepy in there and all yeah. like, Oh Yeah. Probably so, mouse there's there, mice yeah. or something. Yeah. Mice, rats, maybe. Spiders. Yeah. 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 Ellie, how about <laughs> yeah. you? What have you been watching? Oh, my God. You know, talk about the 90s and what you, you, you Nathan, you say that you didn't watch. I've always been watching movies and series and TV since I can remember. It's my thing. It's my passion to watch movies since I was a little young girl. And I remember in the 90s, I only, I wanted to, I, I consistently went to West Newton Cinema to watch specifically foreign films. I was into foreign films back in the, when I was like 21. Oh, I was cool. like just foreign films. That's all I wanted to watch and watch. I did a lot of them. So every week I find myself watching films. And so I have a huge list. I mean, just going to go really quickly. I watched Fast 10. Is it Fast 10? Yeah, fast ten or fast. I, I like I like fast ten more because like fast ten your seatbelts. That's how I think it should be. You know, <laughs> fast ten, your fast ten your, dude. Okay, I grew up watching a car race, car drive. Car, what do you say? Car race, race. Man, this well, is where I, the I, Spanish I, I, English comes in. Race cars. Race car driver. Yeah. Yeah, race, like race, race racing, racing movies, car movies. Yeah. Race, no, that, yeah. No, no. I actually went to the to the. Actual, oh, you went to the racetrack, like the yeah. race car driving oh, track. Yeah. Okay. yeah, my dad took me to yeah. watch motorcycle racing and car racing. Um, since I was like a young girl, like five years old, and I fell in love with that. And I often said, I want to grow up to be to race cars. That's what I want to do for life. Obviously, yep. that didn't happen. But oh, wow. sometimes when the highway is empty and no one's around at night. You're, I you're... go racing my car. <laughs> I feel the need for speed. What, what are you What are you driving, Ellie? Oh, Lamborghini. Nothing else. <laughs> what? 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 You don't believe me? How dare you? I I drive. A, a I just Porsche. want to get an idea in your in your world. What is what is uh, racing? Like, I just picture you, you like right up to like eighty eight or like flooring into like one hundred and twenty. What are you What are you doing? I picture you like like rolling up in your Lamborghini, like and you just come to a screeching halt and you open the door and I'm walking down the street and you're like three picture deal loser and then you just <laughs> gun it and speed off. That'd be awesome. Yeah. I would love to be. Sometimes when I drive and I, during the day, I put these epic soundtracks in the car. Yes. And I imagine that I'm in this movie driving. Of course, I'm driving slow because it's daylight and they're policemen. And so, but no, <laughs> um, I wanted to be that. And so I loved, I actually enjoyed it. Don't enjoyed let the, the cops movie. keep you down. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. I'm like, Señor, ¿qué pasó? No. Um, so I really thoroughly enjoyed it. It's acting was cheesy. The, the plot is cheesy, but I really love the badass women in the movie. Shirley Theron is one of my favorites. She's in there, obviously. You know, um, I love Shirley. Uh, Michelle, yeah. Michelle Rodriguez. And uh, I'm not going to spoil the movie and I'm going to let. But at the end, another person showed up anyway, but I'm not going to say it. Um, so I also watched um, Succession. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. My favorite yeah. series, Love and Death. Everybody watches Succession. I got to see that show. You Everyone gotta. talks about it. I haven't seen a Seriously. single episode. Yeah. Yeah. I even want to watch it again. I'm a couple episodes again. behind right now. I want to go back and watch it from the beginning again, even though I'm at the end almost. And I watched um, Dead Lasso, obviously. Is, and then is next watched- week the finale? Yes. <laughs> okay, I got. I'm two episodes behind. I gotta catch up before Sunday. Yeah, and this I think Sunday, next yeah. Sunday is is a is the finale for Succession too. Next yeah, Sunday. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I got. Yeah. I, got a, yeah. I got two episodes to watch before Sunday. It looks, dude, the finale. I saw mm. some previous. It looks really great. Been so I can't been... wait. I also watched the movie The Sun. Have you? Any of you seen that movie? No. What What was Love and Death though? You mentioned Love and Death. What is oh, that? Love and Death is a series on HBO with oh. um, the one of uh, Elizabeth Olsen. Oh, that's right. Oh my God, she's. I think you mentioned that last oh, week. Oh, someone she's... was talking to me about that week. How amazing she is in that. Oh, Actually, no. At the at the wedding, my friend's wedding, someone was saying that yeah. Elizabeth Olsen's performance is she's incredible. Yeah, incredible, incredible acting. I love her in this uh, role in this film in this series. She definitely carries the series. She carries it. I'm sorry, but she is the the one that carries the series, and and I, I'm loving every single episode um, awesome. she's amazing she's amazing in this film uh in this series um the sun is with um i don't know if you've seen it i saw it on uh, netflix i think with lucky land slots you can get lucky just about anywhere dearly beloved we are gathered here today to has anyone seen the bride and groom sorry sorry we're here we were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time <gasps> no lucky land casino with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry in that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Could be Netflix. Um, it, uh, uh, let me just tell you, I ended up crying in that film. I just, oh, wow. uh, yeah, it's really sad. And um, Hugh Jackman is in a film. Hugh, yeah, Hugh Jackman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and there's two other ladies that I can't remember their names, but they're pretty famous and, and they're in a lot of movies. Um, oh, you know who else is in this movie? The guy from like, The Lambs. What's his name? Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins is in this movie for a brief moment, um, and I loved it. It was. It's very sad, though. Uh, if you're not feeling like want to be sad, don't watch it. But I liked it. And then I saw all these cheesy, cheesy, um, prime movies, um, um, because I don't know. They were just there and they kept popping up. When I was watching them, you just couldn't stop them. No, dude, it was ridiculous because I would stop, <laughs> the movie will stop, and you know how in Prime it comes, it's something comes up again. And so it was like from The Perfect Daughter to um, uh, The One Son. It's one of those, like, the uh, uh, what do you call those films in um, Lifetime? Movie. Oh, like a lifetime, like, like, like yeah. work, so, sad like, movie, like, yeah, like saw, Hallmark I movies. Saw, Hallmark <laughs> movies, like everybody yeah. dies, but everyone dies, but the single mother managed to paint a house. Yay! Yeah, it yeah. was like <laughs> the long, the long lost son gone missing. Um, cradles for cash. Oh my god, right. that's what you see. Oh my god, the the um the something uh, a, a wife's nightmare. Yeah. 
don't know why, but I did watch them. And I'm sitting there watching them thinking, why are you watching this? <laughs> I, it's funny. I will oscillate between like serious cinema epic movies, but then I'm the first person to love a movie like The Sorcerer's Apprentice with Nicolas Cage and Jay Baruchanel. And, and, and he's like, I'm a wizard. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to teach you how to be a wizard. And I'm like, I'm on board. This is great. And we're in New York City. I'm having a great time. Yay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And of course, I watched that, our movie that we're watching today. Uh, discussing later. <laughs> Okay, with with joy in your heart, or just just because uh, just she had to, because <laughs> I had to. But yeah. because you know, I hate, have she my, hate she I'll hate wait, watched it. I'll wait until I have to say something about this movie. Okay, you're probably okay. gonna hate me, but I don't care. All right, All right. well, I'll mention a, a couple things that I saw uh, this week, and I didn't have a lot of time. I'm falling behind on some of the shows I was watching, <laughs> but I did watch a couple movies. I saw. Uh, still, it's called Still, a Michael J. Fox movie. This is streaming oh, on yeah. Apple TV Plus. This is directed by David Guggenheim. This follows the life and career uh, of Michael J. Fox from a young boy up to now. Uh, oh, the wow. style of this documentary, I think, is what is, is really unique. It combines this very intimate interview with Michael J. Fox as he shares his challenges early in his career, wow. just trying to make it in the industry. He, he was so desperate for work. He was stealing jelly packets from a Denny's as sustenance. It's, it's pretty uh, wow. amazing how desperate he was, he was before he landed um, that role on family ties. Oh, so he gets nice. that role and, you know, shortly thereafter he's, he gets the, the shot on um, back to the future. And we all know what happens after that. Yeah. But uh, in the, all the plot beats that we know about his career are in this documentary. But what makes this documentary so unique and watchable, number one, is his story about how he, at the age of 29, at the peak of his powers, he's diagnosed with Parkinson's. And how, but how far he's going to hide this from everyone outside of his immediate family. He was popping these pills on a daily basis and he's keeping them like in his jacket pocket um, and he's timing these pills so that he's maintaining this level, you know, throughout his movie career, his film, in his TV career. It's just fascinating how he's managing this. He's, he's being completely transparent about this to in the, in his interview. Um, this isn't like a Barbara Walters interview. He is, he is just in the, in this raw um, state, just explaining everything. And he is, probably not managing his medication during the interview because he is you see him shaking and completely um being uh, himself in this and showing how he has to um manage his his uh his existence now where they show him in rehab um with a in physical therapy, you know, it's, it's really, it's really heartbreaking seeing this. What's also fascinating about this documentary is the way it's edited because as he is talking about his story, they're using all this amazing archival footage of him from his movies, from television shows, from commercials, from guest appearances to articulate all the points that he's making in his interview. And it's a really effective tool to hammer home all the emotional beats and impact of all these struggles that he's going through throughout the years. This is one of the best, um, I'd say, bio documentaries I think I've ever seen. And it's the highest of recommendations. So that is wow. still a Michael J. Fox movie and it's streaming on Apple TV, Apple TV Plus. So I would love to watch that. I'm, I love Michael J. Fox, yeah. a huge yeah. fan. Yeah. So yeah. Um, the other thing that I saw this past week, uh, I was catching up on. I'll call it homework because in a couple of weeks, Spider Man Across the Spider Verse comes out into the theaters, and I decided I needed to rewatch the um, Spider Man. Which I get mixed up. <laughs> I'm getting mixed up now. <laughs> but Spider Man Into the Spider Verse is the movie that I rewatched across the Spider-Verse comes out in a couple of weeks. So I was really excited because I hadn't seen this in got four or five years. Yeah. 2018 is 2023. So it's been five years. I can't wait for this film. This is, um, 
Well, I don't think there's much I can say about this that probably our listeners don't already know. This was, uh, I think, a revolutionary animated feature film for its time. The animation style was uh, fan- just amazing. I actually like the character of Miles Morales, I think, more than the Peter Parker character. If I if it wasn't for this movie, wouldn't we probably wouldn't have Spider-Man No Way Home. So mm-hmm. it's I think maybe the first maybe it's the first multiverse movie, uh, superhero movie. I don't know. I don't know. It might be. Um, I know these movies aren't cheap to make and it takes a long time, but I really hope that this next movie that comes out uh, makes bank at the box office because I hope they keep on making these <laughs> Spider-Man movies. Um, and I think this is a – it looks like they're you – no, know, I, I think about the animation style for this. And I think it's going to influence other studios and it looks like it is because have you guys seen the trailer for the uh, upcoming Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie coming out this August? No, no, I haven't seen the trailer. No, it's really interesting because I feel like this, these Spider-Verse movies are having that kind of animation influence on other IPs because I get the sense that the, this Mutant Ninja Turtles movie is – going after the same animation, that same kind of vibe. So oh, I think it's really cool mm. what they're doing. I'm not the biggest Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan, but this movie coming out in August kind of has that kind of vibe to it. So I really like what these movies are doing. And I think it, the style of animation is spreading to other studios, which has me kind of excited. I, I hear that. Like I'm not the biggest fan of, of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles either. And I, it's kind of a random comment, but I loved the 1990 live action Ninja Turtles, like Jim Henson movie, because it was a full on, it was almost like R rated level, like Mm. villains and action gritty New York city. Like it was so not tongue in cheek that I missed that tone. Like the foot clan and the foot soldiers were like realist was like a realistic, like hardcore, scary crime syndicate in that movie. And I was blown away as like a little kid back then, but that different time. Yeah. Yep. So uh, Across the Spider-Verse comes out uh, into theaters on June 2nd. So I'm looking forward to that. Yep. So that is what I have been watching the past week. So I think it is time to get to our main review, mm-hmm. War of the Worlds. I need you back in four instead of 12. I got half a career coming in. I can. You know what your problem is? I can think of a couple of women be happy to tell you. 8.30? We said 8 o'clock. Hello, Dad. Hello, Rachel. We'll be back by 9.30 on Sunday. Mom says you got a report due on Monday. What do you know, right? Everything. Rachel, want to see something cool? He's right behind our house. Lightning doesn't strike twice. You believe this, Ray? Every single car? Oh, I've never seen that many strikes of lightning cool. in one spot. There's something down there, and it's moving. Okay, so we just heard a bit from the trailer of Steven Spielberg's 2005 War of the Worlds. It is a... uh, it is, I don't think it's necessarily a direct remake of the 1953 um, War of the Worlds. I think I, you know, I haven't seen that probably since I was a little kid. Have you seen the that version of it, either of you? I did, nope. but, but so I long ago that my mem- I wouldn't trust my memory to talk about it. But I did see I, it. Yeah, I kind of you know when we when I knew we were going to watch this movie, I was inspired to see if I could at least check out part of it and i ne- and I, I think i saw it maybe in, in the 80s on uh, on cable at some point but i have never gone back to rewatch that as an adult and i am kind of curious how that holds up it's been a while was it as and, good as as the garbage pail kids uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, and sadly, you know, I have not read the H. G. Wells book either. So uh, I'm 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 sad and to say, and probably feeling kind of guilty about that, which I I, I know is a classic, but uh, I have I've never gotten around to it. Boy, I have not read it either. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm anyways, with you. yeah. Anyways, so, <laughs> but 
Let's talk about this film. Uh, came out in 2005, stars Tom Cruise, uh, Dakota Fanning. Uh, what do you guys, who would like to begin our, with their thoughts on War of the Worlds? Mm. Sam. Sam? Yep, I knew it. Yeah, <laughs> right. happy, happy to, happy to jump to the wolves of this one. Um, and so, I think we'll, I, even though this is a, a, an eighteen-year-old film, I think we'll, we can still give our uh, spoiler-free thoughts on this. Yeah, I, yeah, I'll, I'll keep my thoughts spoiler-free at first. So Spielberg has since commented that he was trying to, he was making, you said he was making a movie less about aliens, more about the panic and feeling of September eleventh. He was yes. trying to make, and I, I definitely see that. A lot of specific thoughts are connected into spoilers, but without spoilers, what I will say in general about this movie, because I saw it in the theater, for some reason I've bumped into it like four million times on television, so it is incredibly clear in my head. I will say that overall, I think this movie has some very good Spielberg moments. Like there are sections in this movie that is like top form Spielberg suspense. Um, but I must say in general, there's always been a quality to this movie that I didn't quite like, and I couldn't put a finger on what it was. And as I watched it over the years, I thought this is okay, but what is it? Why am I not fully terrified? Why am I not like feeling the suspense? What is it about this movie? And the conclusion that I came to was, there are lots of parts of the movie overall in general that feel kind of the word I would use is stagey. Mm -hmm. I, for me, this movie at times feels like Spielberg on autopilot where he's doing Spielbergian things and techniques, but there's something about it that doesn't quite land to me. And this isn't a spoiler. It happens very early on in the movie, but after the lightning strikes, when the, when the alien tripod comes out of the ground, there's a scene where all the like the the people in the town in New Jersey converge on the cement that's like falling apart. And that scene, I can I feel like I can almost hear like Spielberg on the bullhorn, like, okay, everyone, okay, walking at the same time. And mm. there's a kind of an it's not artifice, but there's a staginess, there's a shot where the the church starts to fall. And the sunlight is coming through the church and it's and and there's something about it where I just feel like I'm watching Steven Spielberg almost imitate himself, but it doesn't seem like his heart is fully in the movie. And I, there are certain scenes I really, really like, um, but he later that same year in December of 2005 came out with a movie called Munich, which for me was incredibly suspenseful. I mean, it's not a perfect film, but it was like Spielberg alive and unleashed. And it almost felt like his attention was focused on that movie. And War of the Worlds was like, all right, yep, I'll do the Cruise blockbuster. I mean, there's one scene where Cruise is running down the street and everything is exploding around him. And you can kind of tell that they just shot the element of Cruise running and they were like, we'll just add in the background later and make it react to him and stuff. So I would say I would give the movie like it's entertaining. It has moments. I, I'm i always about aliens. I like those kind of thrillers. But there's just something about it that that there are moments where the movie feels free. Like it feels like this is going to be an unpredictable ride and what's going to happen. And is the family going to be reunited? And then there are scenes that feel like I'm on a storyboarded kind of track where it's just like, and then this happens and then this happens and here's this scene, but it doesn't quite lift the way a movie like Close Encounters or Jaws would, where you feel like you're almost having a spiritual experience watching those movies. It's So I would give it, I don't know, B maybe, uh, like it's, I don't hate the movie. I enjoy parts of it, but it's, it's, there's an autopilot feel to the directing of this film. That's that would be my general consensus without spoilers. Okay. Ellie. Well, let me just say Sam just basically said everything that I wanted to say. No, so, you're not getting away with that. 
Thanks, Sam, for like letting me know that. But I also feel I also feel the same way uh, about this film. Um, and I tell you why because I, you know, my first I think alien movie I saw was Close Encounters. Oh, the third yeah. kind. Yeah. And I was young and it really affected me. Yes. To the point yeah. that I became obsessed with alien life ever yeah. since. That movie feels like real or something. It's yeah, like that's I, the I, thing. Yeah. It's more as scarier to me, uh, in fact. Way scarier. And the, it's funny is the aliens in that movie turn out to be good, but the terror of the unknown in close encounters. Like I just got goosebumps thinking about it, yeah, and War of the Worlds was like, Burr, here come the tripods. Just you know? because the little kid too, in in Close Encounters, right? And it's like it just there's something. It was more there was more human um, side to this Close Encounter than for me. The World of the Worlds was, I mean, come on, these mechanical things uh, that look like a camera tripod. And they're coming at you, and I. I didn't feel scared. I didn't feel like it did anything to me. To me, it was more like, this is not even believable. Like, this this is not how I envision, I, I, as a human, envision aliens to come through. And certainly not from the Earth or the oceans. I mean, it could possibly, spaceships maybe, but an actual alien that looks like a machine, I didn't buy it. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. there were really great parts in the movie that I really enjoyed. There was some really awesome cinematography, you know, done. Yeah. Um, but overall, for me, this movie, I, you know, you give it a B, but I'm more of a C plus for this movie. Uh, no, and I hear you. You're right. And the thing mm -hmm. is, it's because I'm such a Spielberg fan. I almost, I feel like a little guilty, like, because because I love Steven Spielberg, but it's just, I totally... I share your opinion, Ellie, and I just feel like this movie. There's it. It just seems like he's going through the motions of directing for some or something. Like yeah. he does it, and he's got his craft, and it's, it's technical, and there's huge special effects, but it doesn't have much of a soul. That's it. There's no. Yeah, yeah it's uh, very far fetched for me. This movie. So. Yeah, and 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 without. I mean, spoilers later, but there's some expository dialogue that, that people talk and I'm like, they wouldn't say that this is in the script to help the audience understand. And I'm mm. like, ouch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I almost felt like it was a bit cheesy for me. Just, yeah. You know, I mean, the sound, it was, she, is it okay to say something about the sound or do you want me to swear into a spoiler? No, you can say the go, sound go, go ahead. for me was like, the only part that kind of stuck with me, like the, you know, that sound that comes with with the machine. Mm -hmm. The sound yeah. was the yeah. sound design is yeah. excellent. The sound yeah. design is excellent. The sound is scary. I, agree. I if I heard that sound and I yeah. was like out Freaked in the woods, out. I'd be terrified. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I was about really good for me, but yeah, I had. Yeah. Right. Well, um, I guess it's my turn, so <laughs> I will share my thoughts. So this. Uh, yeah, also, it was the first time watching this, I think, since its release in 2005. I I didn't remember all that much from, my, I think, my initial viewing of this movie. And that may be because I, it didn't leave a huge impression on me back then. However, seeing it with fresh eyes, I feel this movie has one of – I thought it had one of the best initial setups for – Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hey, guys. It is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun, too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Uh, any in, any in, um, alien invasion movie I've seen. I, I think Tom Cruise is actually in pretty uh, peak form in throughout this movie. He's very good and believable. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I, I, I like especially... Dakota Fanning too. Like yeah. I, they're yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. I especially loved him in the first half of this movie dealing with the family. He has two children and an ex-wife. The interpersonal relationships between crews and them, I thought was very well handled. In, uh, in fact, I just want to say it was just refreshing to see Tom Cruise in a movie where he's just playing an ordinary schlub. Yes. He's he's yeah. working machinery. He's he's flawed. He's he's running yeah. late to meet his kids. This isn't Pete Maverick Mitchell. This isn't Ethan Hunt or Jack Reacher, some large in life superhero. He's just a dad. And his only objective in this movie is to protect his children. Yeah. And I thought that was kind of a breath of fresh air to see him in that kind of role in a movie. And I don't I, I'm trying to think of another movie where he's just not playing a secret agent or a spy or trying to take down Nazis or something like that. So, and I love it when he's trying to like, when he's tw- a- trying to like fix his children, like a sandwich and they don't want to <laughs> eat. He's getting all mad. He's like, here's some bread. One for yep. you. One for yep. me. Mm-hmm. One for the house. I was like, ah! he throws it. Yeah. 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 I, I found him really, really good in this movie. And this is, I say, this is one of my favorite roles uh, for, uh, the, for Tom Cruise movie. And, 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 I, and I like him. And I like him in other movies, but I enjoyed the, his character a lot. See, I'm not I saying was, it's my- – I definitely – I totally agree. I think the char- his character is great, yeah. and I think the relationship with his family is great. And it, yeah. for me, it's it's the it's the sci-fi side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to get to it. But his performance – yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm going to get – so – so now seeing this again, uh, I also want to comment on the themes that Steven Spielberg <laughs> employs so that, you know, within this movies, you know, there's a lot of those themes that bubble to the surface that are very clear for me. Like the, the broken home, families are fighting, single parents. And of course, I can now imagine a young Steven Spielberg, you know, watching the original War of the Worlds 1953 film, probably in the theater on his TV as a young boy. It's all kind of... I'm seeing that connection now and I can see why he probably wanted to make this movie. I think this movie is a very effective post 9-11 uh, commentary. The alien spacecrafts blowing up buildings are basically evaporating. People left and right is very harrowing. Uh, there's a scene where there's kind of a plane crash and it's, all these images are, are very um, – reminiscent of scenes that we were seeing on TV back in 2001. So I think there's a, it's a very effective commentary on 9-11. There's a moment where he's coming back after the initial attack. He's covered in all white ash. We were seeing that same thing uh, on TV, you know, 22 years ago. So it's it evokes those same similar feelings. Um, as I said before, I really enjoyed the setup for this movie. How the I actually did like how the aliens were introduced. Yes, it is kind of stagey, uh, that initial scene where they're coming up out of the ground. But I, I loved it. I, I was into it. The whole machinations of them coming up out of the ground. I had never seen that before in a movie. How the Earth is turning and those things come out of the ground. I don't. Th- this is in the first few minutes of the movie. I don't think that's a big spoiler. But I thought that was very original and a lot of fun. The the initial alien attack. Um, but you know what's funny? And, you know, I'm going to wait to spoilers because I, I am going to compare it to another movie later on. Um, you may know what it is. There's another uh, uh, movie that I watched a few months ago that we talked about from the same a similar director. What's the other thing I was going to say? Um, but I think this movie – I think this, the first half of this movie – is much stronger than the second half of this movie. And the last five yes. minutes completely undermine everything about this film. Yes, yes. And we will get into that uh, when we get to spoilers. But that's all I'm going to say for now. Let's talk about spoilers now. I will say one specific f- spoiler. Um, I will say that I, I, though I haven't read the H.G. Wells, the ending where like little uh, like parasites or is what does in the aliens. That's actually part of the original story. Like that's yes. there. Um, I will say in a spoiler thing, I a hundred percent agree with you, Nathan, about the first half being stronger. Um, I the setup of this movie. For the the for for me for some reason the movie is at its best when Tom Cruise and his family or no and the two kids go to to their uh, to his ex wife's house and they go to the basement 
Yep. Mm. And they see the lights out flashing out the window of the yeah. nose. But the second encounters. The, the second the next day starts, the and the, the plane the plane is crashed and everything's destroyed. Yeah. It feels like a universal backlot <laughs> setup. Mm. And and there's this mm-hmm. dialogue where there's a reporter yeah. and she's like He's like, I thought there, he's like, there's more than one. And she's like, what? Are you kidding? They're all over the place. Blah, 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 blah. And she's like, oh, it would have been great if you had had something interesting for a good story. I will say that a move that a scene that stops the motion of this movie dead in its tracks is when they get stuck in that like bunker slash cabin with Tim Robbins uh-huh. for like it's a 25 minutes. Odd. And it's so, it's like, Oh. That's in the that's in the last third of the movie, and yeah. I struggle with that scene because it's a very very odd. Tim Robbins is is playing this antagonist, and he doesn't appear to be that at first. But I, I I'm really struggling with that whole scene. But I think it's also trying to make a commentary. Ultimately, that ends with Tom Cruise's character Ray. I think his name is mm-hmm. he 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 murders. The Tim yeah. Robbins character in the yeah. end, and obviously, um, it's Tom from what, what was I going to say here? But, but basically, Ray kills Tim Robbins to save his daughter. He becomes the monster, no better than the rest of society that's falling apart around him. All the other desperate humans. Did, but did he really have to kill him? And that's the other thing. You know, it's it's very odd. It makes Tom Cruise. No better than anybody else, I feel like in the world. Yeah, but in, in times like that, you know, it's it's uh, it's just whoever stands, you know. At, I know what he's what he's doing do? what he has to do to protect his family, but it is, it's a very very. And by the way, I Tim Robbins' uh, performance I find very annoying in this. He's, movie. It's, he's it's doing, Tim Robbins. He's doing, he has a weird a, Boston. He's a great actor, but. <laughs> I don't he's a understand. great actor, but he chews scenery, and in, in yeah. he's like, Ooh, and I'm like, oh, just is it a Boston accent he has? It's, or a, what? it's like a fake, <laughs> terrible. But I like, I understand Tom Cruise like killing him, and I'm glad that it's off screen. But there, there's some weird when Spielberg goes for the darkness sometimes in this movie. There, there's it comes across as awkward. I don't quite know how to explain it, but like when everyone is clawing through glass to steal their car and they're all piling up on the car and like they they, they steal Tom Cruise's car and, and he and the children have to get out and they're sitting at that diner mm-hmm. and they see the car rolling down the street and the driver like kills someone. Yeah. It's so it's dark. Just, and society so is. Up. I, but I, I just there's something mm-hmm. about it where Spielberg is such a warm filmmaker that when he mm-hmm. does that darkness it's almost like he doesn't understand it, but he does. But he's like, well, the people want it. So all right, now they're going to cut through the glass and shoot each other. And like, it just doesn't quite. It's exploitive. Work for me. Yeah, but yeah. why it's does always, he ex- It's always exploitive. Do- yeah. Well, you know, it's like, I don't know. Why would he want to do it? Because the people want it. Why not just do your film? Well, I don't know if the people want it, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it goes yeah. to. I, I, what I'm trying to say is a very exploitive moment. We get the point. Like society is falling apart, and yeah. you know his car is stolen by at gunpoint, pretty much. Well, he's basically robbed of his car by a mob. Yeah, and 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 you can see like the, the gun is picked up. One person shoots another person. I mean, it's it's gonna keep carry on and on until nobody's gonna be able to take that yeah. car. It just it hammers in the point so strongly that it's and, almost yes. unintentional. Hit over the head. It's like I'm hit over the head. Yeah, you hit over the head, and it's like it's not funny, but it's like unintentionally comical because you're watching it, and you're like, no. "Jesus!" Well, it's supposed to make you feel ill. Yeah. I think this is the point, and I really did feel ill about it. I didn't like the scene, and nothing about it made me feel good. And I think that was the idea: mm-hmm. is that this is this is how ugly mankind is, society has become. So is it effective because it made us feel that way? But I think that was the idea. I, I but see, even though that's the idea, I don't think it was effective because I wasn't. It wasn't. I wasn't was, horrified by it. I was just kind of like, <laughs> like, yeah. this, like if mm. David if David Fincher had directed that scene, mm. he would have it would have gotten way under my skin. But Spielberg. But here's the thing, though: Spielberg can show incredible human darkness, and it's amazing and terrifying, and. I, I mean, I, I to use the ultimate like scary example. I really think that like Schindler's List is a masterpiece mm-hmm. and the darkest chapter of humanity. And not a single moment of that amazing film feels 
like false or or set up to me. It's just for some reason in this movie, I feel like I'm watching like really expensive storyboards of scenes that aren't quite there yet. Like when they get on the ferry and, and, and the, 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 the boat is tipped over, that's like a big set piece. Yep. And it's kind of like, meh, like I, I, and I'm, I'm the guy who wants to see that kind of scene and likes that kind of stuff. And it didn't quite do it for me. And I find Tom Cruise's son, like, irritating out of my mind. He's like, dad, I have to see this. I have to see this. And he like runs into the fire. It's like, and then it when he lives, I'm like, Oh, just kill him off. You know, like is yeah. the set. I, I think one of the issues with the sun is, is it, I don't think it's properly set up as to why yeah. he has it's, this, this need to run off and join the army or, or to see this or what, what is he trying to do? Like, I mean, like, I, I, it's unclear to me what his motivations are. He obviously doesn't have the best relationship with his dad, but but it was uh yeah. It's like the motivations was, was unclear. Are, are unclear, but and like and I, and I know that like I know but, yeah, um, Ellie. Sh- I know Schindler's List is like an extreme example. I'm just saying that like the, I'm I'm I know they're two. It's like night and day on those films. I'm just using that as an example because. Spielberg is incredible with empathy and human darkness and showing characters and motivation. Mm. He, it, he, it just, I don't quite feel it in this movie yeah. for me personally. Ellie, yeah. Ellie you were going to say something. No, I was just going to say that for me, um, that scene when, when the son goes um, towards the, he wants to see what's going on. And it's like you said that he doesn't have that best relation, but you know, because they're divorced, right. With the mom. And so yeah. to me, it's like kids, especially like teenagers, um, and this is by experience. Teenage boys seem to sort of connect more with the mom, in, uh, at least through my experience. Um, and, and so they hold this sort of a uh, chip on their shoulders when it comes to their dads. Yeah. And so for me, this boy didn't want to connect with his dad and has some um, some pain built up because of yeah, what's happened and. Mm, probably blames um Cruz for that you know what i mean um so to me it's like it makes sense that he doesn't want to do anything he wants he wants to be independent he wants to show his dad that, like i don't need you that's how i feel but this boy mm. you know so i hear that i, th- I mean there's a, an example of that kind of where things don't quite there's a really cool shot where they're driving they're escaping and their car is the only car that has power and all the other cars on the highway is dead. And the camera's like spinning around the car, but there's a wide shot that establishes that. And there is a perfect path for their vehicle to drive around. It's just like, how convenient it's it's like that (laughs) shot. It's so that that's why when they're in the basement at his ex-wife's house, I feel like, here we go. This movie starting unpredictable possibility and adventure and terror is about to happen. And Mm -hmm. what follows after that are scenes where I can see the pulse and the beat and I can feel the setup. Like when Dakota Fanning goes to the, to the lake and then one body comes across the water and then Mm -hmm. there's like a river of bodies. It's good. I get it, but it's not quite, uh, it's hard for me to explain, but I, I just feel the, I feel the, the, the work going into this. I feel the film. You're, 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 you're seeing the storyboard behind going on. Going yeah. On behind, yeah. yeah. And, and it interferes with the organic yeah. viewing experience. Cause there are many Spielberg movies that that does not happen to me at all. When I watch them. Yeah. Like, yeah. I did like yeah. that scene in, uh, on the hill that, that particular scene where um, Tom Cruise um, is running up the hill to get his son and daughter. And he's has um, Dakota on his hands. You guys remember that, was that part? Scene. Yeah, and and like that. Dakota's starting to get separated, and he has to choose yeah. whether he's going to. Yeah, that was an effective. Exactly, that was an effective moment where he has to yeah. make the choice, that awful choice. You know, do, does he like try to get his son, or and is you fearing that his daughter's going to be like kidnapped by some other, some other couple? You know, that was a which heart wrenching moment. Like, what does he do at that moment? But that was like that was honing in on like a real. Emotion, you know, what do you do when you're you have to like go after one uh, child or the other? Exactly. You know, that's not necessarily about an alien invasion. That's just about like what child do you save? Yeah, and that that and that part, I have to say, I did 
find a human part of the story for yeah. me where our dad has to make a choice. And yeah. I, as a parent, yeah. I, I don't know what you, what do you do? Yeah. You know? So that was really great. I really liked that scene. No, I want to just mention something about the end of this movie. And I know, th- you know this is obviously based on a book and I think <laughs> we can, the, the, the big flaw is the fact that the book is flawed. You know, the, these aliens are taken down by b- bacteria um and i this it's this, like the this, aliens, this it's like the aliens and signs i was about to mention signs I, yeah. I want to mention signs now yeah great comparison i watched signs you're a huge fan of signs sam i watched signs a few months ago as well i think though that movie is handled a little bit better Mm-hmm. I yes. like Signs. Uh, uh, Signs, I'll say, Me is too. a better movie. Yeah, yes, because it it's focused more on yeah. the yeah. – it, it's more intimate. Yeah. yeah it Even is. though it's stupid that the aliens are allergic to water <laughs> on a water planet. But other yeah. than that, I just I just gloss, gloss over that because I like the yeah. Hitchcockian suspense. And so, yeah. Yeah. But I feel like if these aliens were going to – were, were – their plan from – thousands or millions of years ago was to take over this planet they should have known this back then, about this a long time ago yeah. their plan was flawed from a long time ago these alien this aliens and signs i'll i'll cut them some slack that maybe you know I, I they're know. not intelligent beings they're not that intelligent no they're but really dumb the what <laughs> what the, but what really hammered home as if i didn't like this the end of this movie enough we get here. Here's what I'll say. All right. I think we can all agree that we would love Morgan Freeman to narrate our lives. Yes. Mm. But, but his voiceover at the end of this movie <laughs> does not work. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I don't know what it is. If the cadence in his voice is just way too happy or uppity, I don't know what it is, but I just find it to be like. <laughs> And I'll quote it here in picture Morgan Freeman. From the moment the invaders arrived, breathed our air, ate and drank, they were doomed. They were undone, destroyed after all of man's weapons and devices had failed by the tiniest creatures that God in his wisdom put upon this earth. By the toll of a billion deaths, man had earned his immunity, his right to survive among this planet's infinite organisms. And the right is ours against all challenges, for neither do men live nor die in vain. I, I don't know what it is. None of that it's, works as the closing statement yeah. of this movie. And it's like, oh, just a little bow tie on this. And it's, it, kind, I mean, it's it, kind of cheesy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's – If there ever was a Deus Ex Machina moment for a movie, it is the end of this movie and – <laughs> and Morgan Freeman coming in at the end of this was just it's like, sad, what though. the hell? It's sad. <laughs> like, wait, wait, I know he's in the beginning the, of this too, but he's in the beginning. He's like, we were watched by an intelligence far superior to our own. And it was like, it's good. But, but, but the, I know what you, the end of the movie is so underwhelming because with, of all the situations and organic things that Tom Cruise and his family can go through, when they get stuck with Tim Robbins for a while in the third act, I feel like the movie is killing time mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. sa- saving money. It's like, let's go into a basement. Let's flash a couple of lights out the window. You know, there's only, they only come, the aliens come through the window and there's the ET reference where they like touch the bicycle. It's kind of like, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but, when when Dakota Fanning gets you know kidnapped and they go up into the alien in, into the craft, that's okay. But yep. when the aliens are starting to die and the military is fighting them and and one of them just crashes down, that movie limps to the finish line. Mm. I mean, and it's not like a, you need. I don't need a huge CGI like gigantic action sequence. The movie just kind of runs out of steam and it's like, oh, you know, they got sick and, and they died. The yeah. end. Rrr, rrr. <laughs> yep. you know, it's like I just felt kind of a little I remember feeling a little empty in the theater. And this is really nitpicky. This is just me like that last shot where it zooms in on a tree um, and it like zooms in on a leaf and you see the like microorganisms. The, the branch of this tree is like nebulously floating high up in the sky somewhere. And it's like, where, mm. what are we looking at? I just, the visual effects shot to me there right. was kind of not great. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm just biased because right. I do I, like the, the the Encounter movie better than this. So I love <laughs> Close Encounters. The thing is, like, that's why I I feel kind of bad criticizing Steven Spielberg because at his best, he is so amazing. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, Spielberg at his this is where projects come to life. Our showrooms are designed to inspire with the latest products from top brands, curated in an inviting, hands-on environment, and a team of industry experts to support your project. We'll be there to make sure everything goes as planned, from product selection to delivery coordination. At Ferguson Bath, Kitchen, and Lighting Gallery, your project is our priority. Schedule your showroom consultation and see more from brands like Monogram at build.com ferguson. This is where projects come to life. Our showrooms are designed to inspire with the latest products from top brands, curated in an inviting, hands-on environment, and a team of industry experts to support your project. We'll be there to make sure everything goes as planned, from product selection to delivery coordination. At Ferguson Bath, Kitchen, and Lighting Gallery, your project is our priority. Schedule your showroom consultation and see more from brands like Monogram at build.com slash ferguson quote unquote worst, even though he's still really good. To me, it feels like when he does not fully emotionally connect with the material himself, his craft is always amazing, but I just see him just using technical shots for the hell of it, Mm. but they don't, they, he's like, he, he always has the craftsmanship, but it doesn't connect in the way it does in like Jaws or Close Encounters or a lot of other Steven Spielberg movies. Yeah, true. I agree with that. All right. I think it's time to wrap up our discussion of War of the Worlds. Uh, this was this was good. I'm, I'm glad we we did this. All right. Let's move on to our recommendation shelf this week. And you know, we had a discussion of War of the Worlds. This week we are recommending alien invasion films. How fitting. <laughs> Maybe we got some better movies than War of the Worlds up our sleeve, so Are either one of these any good? Sir? What? Are either one of these any good? I don't watch movies. Well, have you heard anything about either one of them? I find it's best to stay out of other people's affairs. You mean you haven't heard anybody say anything about either one of these? Nope. Well, what about these two? Oh, they suck. Ellie, how about you go first this week? I'm going to throw you <laughs> well, into the I fire. To, I still have to say something, though, that I really, I am obsessed with Alien. Everything. Um, and like I said at the beginning, it's all due to Mr. Spielberg because he got me when I was young uh, and I saw my first Alien movie that scared the uh, Jesus out of me. And so I then became obsessed with the universe. And he's... I gotta say, Spielberg is the reason that I am obsessed with anything universe, um, and I every consistently go outside at three a.m. in the morning sometimes when everybody's sleeping just to look at the sky to see if I see something, you know. So I love that. Yeah, I, I'm obsessed. Yeah. Like I, everybody's sleeping, it's just me and the universe and the stars and the moon, and I imagine things, and I love that moment, that connection that I have with that the universe. So yeah, it's Mr. Spielberg's fault, but um, so every time there's a chance that there's a movie coming about aliens i am going to watch and so i have so many favorite ones one science is one of my favorite ones too but um i recently saw the movie like a couple of years ago i believe i think it was what was it nope oh yeah um, yeah, yeah that came out last year, yeah. summer yeah yeah it was the last summer yeah um the trailer of nope uh really got me curious to see the movie and also because I really like Jordan Peele. Uh, I liked him in his comedy show. I thought it was so funny. And the fact that he won the Oscar for that other movie, um, was it Get Out? Get Out, yep. Get Out. Um, And oh my goodness, Get Out was one of those films that you're like, what the? (laughs) Yeah, oh man, yeah. Yeah. And and, and how how he embeds the the idea, the notion of um, racism into his film, you know, and discrimination. Uh, That was... And I feel like in this movie, um, nope, he does the same thing, you know. Um, but I what I loved about this film mostly, I, it almost reminded me of uh, Spielberg's um, Close Encounters. 
for some reason, it really did. It, it got me to like, I'm sitting there watching the movie because I went to the movies, to the cinema and watched the film. And I, it, I was thinking like, you know, what, what does this movie reminds me of? And, and then it dawned on me. It's like, it reminds me of Steven Spielberg's Close Encounters. Um, but, you know, Daniel Kaluuya was also in the Get Out movie. So he's worked with him before. I really like this actor. Um, Steven Young is in there. Too. Oh wow! Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and I, he's, I am a fan of Stephen. Okay, so anything he does, I'm gonna watch. Um, and there's humor in the film. There's a bit of humor. Um, you, you know what? I got a bit scared more in this film than than the world of the worst did. And it's just it's the idea of not knowing what's happening like you know and gruesome you know the way it attacks the people uh, uh stay in your seats this is new uh they're early they're giving us a real show today that they are they're giving us a real show today they're ready we're ready welcome to the star lasso experience only at Jupiter's claim. Please remember to avoid using your cell phones or any flash cell photography off, during the event. Bear with us now. Trained animals can be unpredictable. <laughs> now sit back, stay in your seats, and enjoy the Star Lasso experience. And it's it's scary because it's you don't know what it's it's mm -hmm. its motivation is somehow beyond it's yeah. it's the yes. other it's the outer and I love that feeling and I'm a like obsessed with like aliens in the night sky and 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 Seriously. it's I've been trying to like come up with the the proper story for that because that's one of my greatest passions and I'm like okay if ever I was to do a feature it would involve aliens. And but it's so easy to mess it up or get cheesy or yeah. explain it too much. And so yeah. it's like you, you have to it's 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 the tonality of that movie that really works. I know it what you're does. saying. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and it has to make it, it as an audience, me watching the movie, uh, any alien movie it has to make me feel that it can really happen to me. Yes. That this can mm -hmm. It's a human side of the story that I feel it could really happen to me, you know. And um, I don't know what's up there. I don't know what's in the spaceship. We don't, I don't remember ever really capturing that. But there are some cheesy moments that I thought <laughs> was like, you know, I, I mean, the big blob uh, uh, cloud coming at you. But I, I, I mean, there were some really awesome cinematography moments. I loved the horse scenes at the mm. very end when he's like, when they're trying to kill the, the alien um yes and 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 uh daniel is on that horse you know and i don't often see or like when they realize there's a cloud in the sky that never yeah. moves i was like <gasps> how about the uh the the sitcom scenes with the with the the monkey oh the monkey god that, oh was, god that was brutal yeah what? that was scarier to me than yeah it was yes, like when the that monkey was the most like, disturbing goes part. on the murder no, i was like oh I, my god it has nothing god. to do with aliens no, but that true. alone that there's so, there's so many you know i would love to have a, a discussion that maybe sometime about that movie because it's so much to dig into so with that much. And um, yeah, fascinating, fascinating it. film. Yeah, yeah. fascinating. I loved, it. I loved everything about the film. Yeah. So. The storytelling I, is so interesting in it too. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. do things in a standard way, which makes no, it, it more makes it great. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I loved it. Good, it's one good, of my favorites. Great film, great yeah. film last year. And sad that thing did not get a single nomination for anything last year. I cannot believe that. Nope. Yeah, it, it definitely yeah. deserves something for sure. Like, yeah. I mean, I agree. Yeah. 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 Well, so good pick, Ellie. Hey. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sam, because I always go last. Sam. Sam, you're 
him. <laughs> I would go. I, I, it's funny. I didn't put this on the list initially, but just talking about it, I, 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 I will mention Signs again because I do like it a lot. And what scares me so much about that movie is I like how you're learning about what's going on in the world and the whole world is being invaded, but you you see it through their television yeah. at their house and you stay with them the whole time. And I like the fact that literally the aliens are doing like reconnaissance and there's like creatures in the um, the corn stalks and their the presence is like creeping in on their house and yeah. it's very nightmarish. Um, I also enjoy to a certain extent uh, Independence Day, although I think it it plays more kind of like a fifties. Sam, kind of, are you yeah. trying to sneak in two picks? <laughs> he just oh, did. I thought, I thought we were supposed <laughs> to do three. I didn't he know that. Oh, okay, <laughs> so I'll just focus on signs then. Yeah, sign <laughs> signs was good. Yeah. The end. <laughs> That's one of my. You think this is a top yeah. three list? Oh, I thought we were just just like picking. Uh, I, that's right. It's usually one. I forgot no, about that. So, signs, sign, signs is definitely the one. You, yeah. No, go for it. Tell, tell. You, I'll let you do your thing. No, I, I was just saying. I, 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 well, I, I'm I'm actually glad there's just one because I I like Independence Day, but it's just because there's a classic '90s fun vibe to it. But I don't know if I would put Independence Day as like an incredibly high quality film, but it's an enjoyable movie. And I just, I, what I really like about it is payoff kind of matters to me in the end. And when Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum actually have to go inside the ship on that mission, I like the fact that they go there. I like the fact that it's big and grandiose and it just, um, I, I, boy, I'm blanking on his name, but the guy that did the score, who also did the score for Stargate, an earlier Roland Emmerich film, it just the music is that's a very fun blockbuster. Um, two different movies, but yeah, I guess I would those. That's what I would would mention. I okay. mean, very rarely do I find alien movies that scare me, but you know, Close Encounters did, uh, Science did. You know, Close Encounters is feels so real. It feels like you're watching does. an actual right. arrival, and like, like young, I, keep, young I keep going back to Close Encounters. Wizard. Yeah, I just yeah. I keep going back to Close Encounters because it really changed my it changed me mm-hmm. forever. <laughs> that was the one of the first movies that my dad like showed me. Like I saw that as like a little kid, and that left the strongest impression, just, and it still does, and yeah. it is so emotional too and i would like i would watch i can watch close encounters over and over again that's how much i love the movie and well, yeah it's All it's right. incredible yeah so um i have my turn so the 90s i i think were a glorious time for films Studios were greenlighting anything uh with from up and coming directors and robert rodriguez had Several underground successes with El Mariachi and Desperado and From Dust to Dawn. Her. Yeah. So uh, studios uh, were offering him up lots of scripts to direct. And the next film that he directed after those slew of films, which are some of my favorites, was the 1998 science fiction horror film, The Faculty, which oh, is wow. my recommendation shelf pick this week. Is that in 90? Isn't that? I thought that was 99. 98. It is? Wow. Okay. Yep. Uh, In the 90s, Robert Rodriguez was my favorite director, not just because his films in the style of his his film is the style of directing, but because when where he came from, he was a self made director. His first feature was done on a shoestring budget. He was a hero of mine. Uh, So. Uh, I, I, I do always, love Robert, by the way. Yeah, I do love him. Yeah. I was always in line, um, first in line at the theater for all of his films. So <laughs> I adore this film. On the surface, it's a simple story of a high school faculty that's taken over by an alien parasite. Each one is, a, is a infected one by one. As much as it is a, a horror movie uh, about this takeover, the subtext is very much a commentary about teenage alienation and social roles, something that is present even to this day, um, yeah. which is why I've always said that this movie, this movie's elevator pitch was probably the breakfast club meets John Carpenter's The Thing. <laughs> 
This film has a, a silly, great cast in it, many of which would go on to bigger things like Josh Hartnett, Elijah mm -hmm. Wood, uh, Clea Duval, Jordan Brewster, Usher, Femke Jansen, Selma Hayek, Robert Patrick, B.B. Newith, Piper Laurie, and Selma even John Selma Hayek is in this film, I forget. Yeah, and, oh. and John Stewart are, is in oh, this. Wow. Yeah, John Stewart it, too? I forgot yep, that. Yep, he I plays one of the that. teachers. It also has a kick-ass soundtrack back when soundtracks were a thing. I had this one. <laughs> so uh, this is just one of those really fun late 90s movies uh, that uh, I watched over and over. I was working at a video store at the time when this came out. And I think I stole the VHS from the store because <laughs> I loved it so much. So uh, great, fun movie. This is streaming now on HBO Max, actually just Max now, not to be confused with Cinemax or Max Headroom or Max yeah. Powers or Max von Sydow or any other Maxes you can think of. So, yeah, I I, I love this film. I recommend it. <laughs> All right. So okay. that's those are our recommendations this week. All right. So last bit of business is uh, just to mention any of their upcoming releases. Only other thing coming out next week is a big Disney release coming out, the live action Little Mermaid, which is um, it's basically just a live action remake of the 1989 animated feature. I will probably be seeing this with my daughters at some point in the theater. I'm in no particular rush to see this, but I'm sure I'll be getting around to it. That's the big release coming out next week. In two weeks, of course, is Spider-Man Across the mm -hmm. Spider-Verse, which uh, I'm very excited for. But that is it. Uh, anything, any last words from you guys? I'll just say that flipping your fins, you don't get too far. But I'd love to go up where they walk, up where they run, you know, up where they spend all day in the sun. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great to be part of your world? Sorry. Well, you guys know that mermaids were not so nice back this the legend of mermaids is that they were not very nice. Um, That's true. It's scary, yeah. They were scary and they were they were they would lure uh They're like the sirens. Yeah, they were lured yeah. the men, the sailmen, sailors, the sailors. Like, sailors, yeah, yep. um, and kill them. So, but then you know, um, but then they start getting grew red hair and start yeah, singing, and you know, about pretty sexy looking. Yeah, you know, I don't know. So a change. I, I just want to go. <laughs> I just want to go where the people go. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm Looking sure forward to seeing a, a very realistic looking Sebastian the crab uh, <laughs> that looks so yeah. real. It's like, how can you, how can I like the crab so much in the 1989 film? It's like <laughs> this movie looks like he's like an actual crab. I'm like, great. It's a crab with no facial expression, <laughs> but I haven't seen it. So I shouldn't talk yet. <laughs> it's a crab with lips. I'm guessing. Yeah. So we can, so we can actually speak. Does it have very, very big lips? I don't know how that's going to work. Does it have very big lips? I bet I, it probably has big lips, but I, you know, at the very least, I bet the ocean storm scene where like they're like, you know, the prince is like they're like crashing and she rescues him. I bet that will be visually spectacular. I just, you know, because if ever they were going to do a scene in modern times, well, they'll get the storm and the ocean right. Well, we'll see. I I have a feeling it's going to make bank at the box office no matter what because. But let me tell you something, guys. Yeah. The kids aren't going to judge the movie; they're just going to enjoy it. So. Yeah, yeah, true. And every parent is going to be bringing their kids to see it. It is. <laughs> I think it's going to be a a big hit, no matter yep. what. Probably because it's that's what happens with these movies. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm too curious not to see it. I will be seeing it in the theater because I. I want to know what it is. And if yeah. I'm gonna watch it, I'd rather watch it on the big screen. You know. So yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. be there. Yeah. All right. Well. Sam, just want to say it's great to have you back after nearly a month away of either you being in another country or traveling through mountains or whatever. So we're finally all together again, and that's wonderful. It's a pleasure to be here. Dare you see her floating on the blue lagoon? So we're going to be back next week, and we're going to be reviewing the uh, movie Air – 
which is streaming on Prime, Amazon Prime. And uh, yeah, it came out on Prime a couple weeks ago. So I'm looking forward to that. You have both seen this. I have not. So we haven't done a full review of this movie. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about this. You both have watched this and have enjoyed it, but we're going to do a full review. I'm stoked. I think uh, I think Michael Jordan gets a bunch of money in this movie. I'm not sure. <laughs> and there's And there's a shoe that gets made, but that's all I know. Woo! <laughs> that's the story beats do we need to do a review i think i just spoiled everything so yeah you just totally did <laughs> yeah. you totally there, might, there might be more to it than that ben affleck dies whoops no. Oh. oh no it's, it's not true <laughs> not true not true not true okay so that's the show everyone thank you for tuning in back to the frame rate it's part of the western media podcast network you can email us directly at back to the frame rate at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at back to the frame rate and on Twitter at back frame rate. Maybe, maybe, okay. maybe you should get a better handle. I don't know. Um, and perhaps someday we might get a TikTok. And we'll be TikToking with the TikTokers on TikTok. We'll see. In, Mo in Montana. Her, yeah. her, her. Sorry. You can okay. find past I episodes. I will get it done this weekend. I promise. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> you can find past episodes of the show and other podcasts from the Western Media Podcast Network on our website. And I will put the link to that in the show notes. That is all. The show is over. Goodbye, everyone. Adios. Say bye, Sam. <laughs> Just would. See you later, fabulous people. <laughs>